Jesus, we have the victory. Oh, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Satan would have to flee. Oh, tell me who can stand before us when we call on that great name. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, we have the victory. Help me in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we have the victory. Oh, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Satan will have to flee. Oh, tell me who can stand before us when we call on that great name. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, we have the victory. One more time. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we have the victory. Help me say it in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Satan will have to flee. Oh, tell me who can stand before us when we call on that great name. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, we have the victory. Come on, give the Lord a hand of praise. We magnify the awesome God and we give God some praise on this awesome morning. God has been good to us. One more time we come before you saying good morning to all of you. God is yet good. God is yet good on the throne. God is yet doing everything that he said he would do. He is yet my shepherd. I yet don't have to want. He yet provide all of my needs according to his riches and glory. He yet is my keeper. He yet is my protector. He allowed me to lay down on last night, right. kept me while I was slept, sleeping, woke me up this morning, clothed in my right mind. I help my health and my strength. I give God the praise on today because he alone is worthy of all the praise. Man cannot do what God has already done. Not can he do what God is doing, but he cannot do what God has already done. So that's why we praise God on this morning. We lift up the name of Jesus. We give God Praise, glory, and honor for all he's doing because we serve an awesome God. And we give God praise and glory. In your Bible, excuse me, on this morning, let's go to the book of Proverbs, the second chapter, verses 1 through 11. Proverbs, the second chapter, verses 1 through 11. Amen. Proverbs 2, 1 through 11. Proverbs 2, 1 through 11. I'm going to read both from the King James Version and the New Living uh, Testament. I'm going to read this twice just to give you another understanding as we go through the word this morning. Okay, in your Bible is reading from Proverbs, the second chapter, verses 2, 1 through 11. It reads as follows in King James Version. My son, if thou will receive my words and hide my commandments with thee, so that thine uh, so that thou incline thy ear unto wisdom and thy heart to understanding. Yea, if thou criest after knowledge and lifted up thy voice for understanding, if thou seekest her as silver and searchest for her as for hid treasures, then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord giveth wisdom. Out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. He laid up sound wisdom for the righteous. He is a buckler to them that walk uprightly. He keepeth the paths of judgment and preserveth the way of his saints. Thank you, Lord. Then shall thou understand righteousness and judgment and equity. 
yea, every good path. When wisdom entered into thy heart, and knowledge is pleasant unto thy soul, discretion shall preserve thee, understanding shall keep thee. All right, in the New Living Testament, Proverbs the same, 11 verses I like to read. It said, my child, listen to what I say and treasure my commands. Turn your ears to wisdom and concentrate on understanding. Cry out for insight. Ask for understanding. Verse 4, search for them as you would for silver. Seek them like hidden treasures. Then you will understand what it means to fear the Lord, and you will gain knowledge of God. For the Lord grants wisdom. From his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. He grants a treasure of common sense <laughs> to the honest. He is a shield to those who walk with integrity. He guards a treasure of, uh, 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 he guards the path of the just, and he protect those who are faithful to him. Listen to the word. Then you will understand what is right, just, and fair. And you will find the right way to go. For wisdom will then enter your heart. And knowledge will fill you with joy. Wise choices will watch over you. Understanding will keep you safe. Our reading this morning, Proverbs 2, 1 through 11 our subject text for the day is the value of wisdom, the value of wisdom. Last Sunday, we talked about the call to wisdom, the call to wisdom. Of, in other words, getting wisdom. How do we get wisdom? What does wisdom come from? What, what, what is the thing that we need to do? And in, in, in that lesson on last week in Proverbs 1 and 7, I want to recite again what it said in Proverbs 1 and 7 from our previous lesson. It said, the fear of the Lord All right. is the beginning uh -huh. of wisdom. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, meaning that we're understanding where our wisdom is coming from, understanding that it is God that's going to be orchestrating, understanding that if we're going to get this lesson on today, we need to know. That this is one of the best lessons that we're going to even come in knowledge of. Just one of the best. That's telling us how to get what we said that we already do not possess. And we find here in our reading. I, I was reading something in our focus here in our lesson on today. And it's talking about a father that was, his son wanted to learn uh, karate. And I thought this was interesting. His son wanted to learn karate. And so uh, before he sent him to uh, to karate school or start taking karate lessons, he told his son he wants he wanted him to watch the movie. Everybody remember the movie Moses, the Karate Kid, the Karate Kid. Everybody saw the Karate Kid, and and he said, Father, why do you want me to keep watching that movie over and over again? And he said that Bruce Lee was his favorite karate fighter. But uh, Bruce Lee wasn't teaching lessons. He wasn't whatever. He said, I know he may be your hero, but I want you to watch the Karate Kid. And he said, why, Dad? Do you want me to watch the Karate Kid? He said, the first lesson I want you to understand is the importance of listening to the instructions of the teacher and do exactly as he instructs you. Oh, my. We got a problem with church folks with that one. Let me say that again. What he wanted him to learn first is to listen to the instructions of his teacher and do exactly. That's our problem. Do exactly <laughs> as he instructs us. Yeah, yeah. Let's just tell the truth. Most of us church folk, first of all, we don't listen and we do not do exactly what the teacher said. Let me, let me make it more personal. Your pastor if you are a member of anybody's church, you belong to any fellowship, and you have a pastor, be it man or woman, whatever the case may be, our problem is we don't listen, and we don't do what they say. When you hear instructions, when you hear the word being taught, you turn right around and say, I'm going to do it like I want it. That's right. Yeah. 
You sound just like our children. If y'all know our children, we tell our children, we instruct our children. They sit there while we're instructing them. They nod their head. They tell you, mom and dad, yes, I'm going to do that. I understand exactly what you say. And as soon as the conversation is over and while you're talking, they're already saying, and I'm not going to do what mom and daddy said. I'm just listening to them because I'm giving you the respect. They turn right around and do something totally different. They will not listen. Right. Oh, my. If you're going to be blessed today, if you want to be blessed by God, you have to listen to instructions and do exactly what you are being instructed to do. Uh, I worked with a guy on my job many years ago when I worked at Bourne, uh, 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 McDonnell Douglas, which eventually became Bourne Aircraft. And I had a gentleman uh, training me on a new job that I didn't know how to do. And while he was training me on the new job, I was starting to do things my own way, and I thought of another way to do it while he was training me. So this gentleman said to me, he said, listen, Moses, he said, after, somebody ought to say after, he said, after I get to showing you how to do the job, the way it should be done, and the way I do it, after I get to doing that, now if you find a different way, if you find a better way, if you find a way to add to what I'm showing you, do it, listen to me now, after I have trained you. Well, I was one of y'all before, but I'm not like you now. I was trying to train the trainer. Well, you cannot train the trainer. You cannot instruct the instructor. You got to understand that you got to listen and do right. <laughs> exactly what the instructor is trying to say. I learned it the hard way, but it worked out better. Secondly, he said, the reason I want you to watch, this is our other problem. The Karate Kid, he said, because I want you to follow the instructions without a clear understanding. Mm. Uh-oh. Mm. I'm telling the church folks up this morning. Thank God, the folks that's not in the church, that's not your problem. But you church folk, you church going folks, say you love God, say you uh, love Jesus, say you love your leaders. He said, follow instructions without a clear all right. Woo! Understanding. I can't do it, Pastor. I need to understand what you're saying. I need to know why God is saying it. I, I need to where we go, know where we're going from here. You, all you need to do is listen and obey. I'm going to tell you something. I'm the pastor of the church. And, and God say, do a lot of things that I do not understand. And I don't ask God all those questions. Well, God, what I got to do after this, how this and how that. God said, do what I say. And after I do what I say, many times the understanding comes later. Let me, let, let me help us out here. Many of us are not obedient because you say you don't understand. The Bible did say out of all your getting, get an understanding. But it didn't say, it didn't tell you not to obey even though you don't understand. Oh, it's a good lesson this morning. Some of y'all don't like it already because some of y'all are bold and whether you understand or not, say, I'm not going to do it without, amen, the understanding. So he said you must be willing to trust your instructor and follow their instructions. I done told y'all many times before, you ought not be at no one's church you are not to be under the leadership or tutelage of nobody that you will not follow their instructions. Listen, the, the, the Bible let us know. He said, my sheep know my voice and a stranger they will not follow. It's important to know that we have, I'm going to say it, yes, I'm going to say it. We have both the sheep in the church and we have the goats in the church. And, and let's just tell this, tell the truth. The sheep hear and obey. Hello, somebody. So you want to ask which category you in on this morning? Well, you figure it out. Sheep obey. Goats don't. Goats have to ask questions. Goats have to get all this understanding. Goats, you have to go through all of this explaining. No, no, sheep. And you want to know why God regulated it and he identified us. I'm even the sheep to God. You are the sheep to me as pastor. But he identified us as sheep because sheep need to be led. 
because on the natural side, in their, in their atmosphere, in the animal world, they are a dumb animal. Hello in the house. Don't nobody get frustrated. Don't go lying on me and telling folks I'm calling you dumb. I didn't call you dumb. I, I'm telling you what the sheep are identified, even in the natural realm, they are dumb animals. They have to be laid. Sheep won't drink from running water. That's why they need a shepherd to take them to waters that are still. That's why they need a shepherd to protect them because they're frail and they can't take care of themselves. If you listen to wisdom, on this morning, you're going to be a lot better member when you go back to church. And you come back to church on this coming Wednesday, like Gloria Brown is doing for Bible study. And next Sunday, we're back in church. You're going to be a lot better member if you listen to instructions and do exactly what you told and obey without all of those questions. Hello up in the house. Because after you get your questions answered, you yet don't obey. Oh, my, I'm in the house this morning. Whether you like it or not, God is real. This thing is real. It's all about what Jesus said. And so here we are talking about the value. The value of wisdom. And if we look at the lesson on this morning, we're getting ready to get into it now. The value of wisdom. Listen, as we read these 11 verses in Proverbs 2, I want you to say to the young people, young people don't cancel out the wisdom of our seniors and our age people and our age saints. Do not cancel out the wisdom of our seniors and our age saints. You got to understand something. You got to understand it right now. Listen, there are some seniors that have wisdom from God. There are some seniors that have wisdom from God. And if you are a wise person, and if you want to be a wise person, young people, because you're young and you're strong and you think you know everything already, you don't know everything already. You need to understand that wisdom comes from God and wisdom is coming from people that's going to show you what you do not know. Hallelujah. You ought to look at yourself and don't be a fool. Now watch this. Fools. I'm going to say this before we get into the lesson. Fools are just not in the street. Uh-oh, going to make somebody mad this morning. Yeah, fools are not only in the street, but fools come to church. Uh-oh, somebody said, Pastor, that called me a fool. I did not call you a fool. I'm going to give you the definition of what the Bible said fools do. And then after that, you can decide whether or not you are a fool. But I'm letting you know that fools come to church. You know what fools do? The Bible said last week. Yeah, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. In that same Proverbs 1 and 7, it said the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. That's a wise person. But here it is. Here's the category. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. So you want to know whether or not you're a fool or you're a wise person or not? Fools despise wisdom. And instruction. In other words, you're smart already. You got the intellect already. You've been to school. You've been trained. You got it. You got man's wisdom. You got man's knowledge. You was born with something. You think you're it. But listen, if you despise wisdom and instructions that make you a fool, whether you come to church or not, hello up in the house. So it said wisdom, since it comes from God, that's where we want to get it from. And last week we talked about the proverb. A proverb is simply, it's a teaching that's, 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 uh, that, that's uh, governed to conduct what your life is and how you are to govern yourself even from a spiritual basis to have a happy life and a good life and a godly life. But in order to do that, you have to listen and you got to obey. Oh, my, y'all know the trouble we have, not only in the church, but in the world, the problem today. Folks are not listening, and then if they say they're listening, they don't obey. I remember growing up as a child many years ago, and we would oftentimes hear our parents say, Moses, did you hear what I said? And I would say to Mama, yes, ma'am. And she said, no, you didn't. I said, yes, I did, Mama. She said, no, you could not have heard. 
what I said because what you are doing is not what I said. You ought to tell somebody, did you hear what I said? Because if you are not doing what you heard, you really were not listening to what I said. Hello, open the house. That's the difference between hearing and listening uh, and doing. The Bible said don't be just hearers of God's word, but be ye doers of the word also. More importantly, I need to be doing what I'm hearing. All right. Hello in the house. Yes, it's a good one this morning. I'm taking my time because this is good. This needs to incubate a little bit. Uh -huh. This, this needs to saturate. Uh, yes, this needs to marinate. Yeah, this needs to go down deep, just not in your ear gate, but it needs to go through your head, go in your head, get in your heart so your mind can start thinking right. Amen. You don't need it like a shower. Water, water, run on you, run on. No, you need this to go inside. You, you need to do like a baby told Ezekiel, eat the whole, eat the whole roll. You need to eat the whole roll this morning. If you want to be blessed, the value of wisdom. Here's our other part before we really dig down deep in here. If you don't value wisdom, you won't get it. Oh, this word is powerful today. If you don't value wisdom, you will not receive wisdom. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Let's get to it. In our lesson today, in Proverbs 2, starting at verse 1, he said, my son, if thou will receive my word. Listen, we can't do nothing else until you receive what you heard. And receiving what you heard implies doing what you heard. Someone said, well, well, well I heard you. No, you, you, you didn't receive what you heard because what I see you doing is different than what I told you. And I see you doing differently than what the word said. Let's just make it plain and simple. How do you know folks that are a Christian? Everybody that they talk about they're a Christian, they're saved and they love God. But listen, your lifestyle tells me who you love. Right. Your lifestyle tells me if you love God or not. How you walk tells me who you love. Right. How you talk tells me yeah. who you love. Where you go tells me who you love. And who your friends are tell me who you love. I don't care whether they're family or not. Amen. We got some unsaved family members and some of them. Hallelujah. We don't need to hang around them because they are unsaved and they don't love God. I didn't say we couldn't love them. I didn't say we couldn't see them. I didn't say we couldn't talk, talk to them. But I said hang. Hang implies that's your association all the time. Yes, yes, yes. We get to the nitty gritty on this morning. My son received my words. And then he said hide my commandments with thee. Well, in order to receive them, in order to hide them, they got to go into your heart and not in your head. See, the problem with y'all, y'all head smart. We got a lot of head smart. Not head starts, but head smarts. Yeah, you smart in your head, but your heart haven't gotten it yet. So, so your head is smart, but your heart haven't received no wisdom. So he said, hide my commandments where? With thee. David said, the word have I hidden in my heart. Yeah. That I might not sin against thee. If it's in my heart, then it reminds me of what I should be doing and what I should not be doing. Yes, if it's in my heart. But see, if it's in your head, I'm going to say it like this. It's just bouncing around. All right. <laughs> yeah. 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 Some of us, uh, I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to call you that. But you, 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 you know, some stuff is loose. And it's just bouncing around in your head. But it ain't doing no good because it's not in your heart. So he said, receive my word and hide my commandments with thee. Woo! Let's deal with these first five verses. These first five verses are the pursuit of wisdom. In other words, how to get it. Within these five short verses, there are eight verbs. Yeah, there are eight verbs that we're going to use and then urge the listener to take action. Eight verbs in these first five verses that it's urging us to use this morning. And it said, turn your ear. So the first thing in order to apply or get wisdom, 
I must first have an ear to hear. That's my first word. I, I must have an ear huh, to hear if I'm going to apply wisdom. And then it told me to concentrate on put some time in, put some effort. Uh, 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 I believe some said his word in my heart that I'm going to sit against him. And then David said, in his law, do I meditate? Come on now. The word of God can change you. The word of God can make you better if, if you don't concentrate, if you don't meditate on God's word. Meditation is vital to your growth in God. All right. So, so y'all folks that's got it loose in your head, it ain't gonna work loose in your head. It's got to get in your heart, and in your heart come from meditating. You know why we do things over and over again? Because the stuff that we do habitual. That's what you call a habit. A lot of you do what you do because it's a habit. You've done it more than once and you like what you were doing and you continue to do that. Well, make a habit of concentrating on God's word, doing what God said when God said. You got to learn how to meditate. Hello in the house. Learning how to meditate implies I got to put this thing, not just hear it in my ear, but I got to stir it around. I got to walk around thinking about the word of God. Go to sleep thinking about the word of God. On my job while I'm working, the word of God. While I'm in the grocery store, the word of God. While I'm standing in line in the bank on the word of God. While I'm walking in my neighborhood, concentration, meditation. Y'all go to that concert, whatever you call it, concentrated meditation, whatever that stuff is, yoga. You don't need no yoga. You just need the word. Yoga the word. I tell you what you do. Y'all like yoga? Yoga it. There you go. I got a new slogan. Yoga the word. Yoga. You are sitting at home with your legs crossed and your arms folded and your mind on God. Yoga up on God. Hallelujah. And y'all paying to go to yoga to get, get transcendental meditation. You don't even got to pay nobody. Send it to your house. Hallelujah. Somebody said, calm down, preacher. Yeah, calm down because we're doing a lot of methods that man say, but we won't listen to what God say. Hallelujah. All right, our next thing is, he said, cry out. Cry out meaning speak out for it. Open your mouth. In other words, set your sights on it. Cry out. See wisdom. I, I need that. And anything a smart person, whenever they see something they need, they try to acquire it. How smart are you? Oh, yes, yes. Got to take your time this morning. Then he said, ask. Well, if we go to Matthew, the book of St. Matthew, the seventh chapter, Verses 7 through 8. St. Matthew, the 7th chapter, verses 7 through 8. Let, 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 let's go to that. I, I think it's time to just take our time in the Word. No sense in rushing and running off because some of y'all haven't got it now because it's just bouncing around in your head. You need it more than bouncing around in your head. You need it in your heart. St. Matthew, the 7th chapter, verse 7 and verse 8. It said, ask and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. What did he say? For every one that asketh, receive it. And he that seeketh, find it. Right. And to him, hallelujah, that knocketh, it shall be opened. So the question today is, it's, it's not, if it's attainable, it's not if you can't acquire it, it's not that it's not easy to get. Look at someone and say, you need to take some time to acquire wisdom. Wisdom does not come overnight. Mm -hmm. You can't find, let me hold up my glass with the water in. You can't find wisdom in a glass. All right. You can't find wisdom in a bottle. <laughs> my job. But you can't find it in God. Right. So watch this wisdom. You can't drink it. Look at God. Wisdom, all of y'all smokers out there. Well, you can't smoke it. Woo. You can't snort it. All right. Oh, for you that believe in needles, neither can you shoot it up. Woo. Woo, I'm on you this morning. I know I got you now. Can't drink it, can't.
can't smoke it, can't snort it, and you can't shoot it. Well, thank God. All you got to do is ask. Hallelujah. That's way easier than drinking, snorting, shooting, and snorting. Woo! Look at Jesus. Everybody thought that I got to take me a hit before I go do this. I, I got to go get lit before I go do this. You, you don't have to get hit or lit. All you got to do is ask God. Ask God. <laughs> God will light you up. Yes, he will. <laughs> you want to be lit? You want to be turned up? I'm turned up right now. And ain't smoke nothing. I drink nothing. Shot nothing. Smoke nothing. Snort nothing. Amen. All I ate was an apple this morning. And if it had anything in it, thank God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. No, I didn't shoot nothing in my apple. I didn't lace it with nothing. I didn't put nothing on it. And I didn't drink something behind it. Come on, preacher. Hallelujah. I'm in your business this morning because we need to stop walking around here as foolish people. All you got to do is hear wisdom from someone that knows. And wisdom is coming from God. And there are people that love God where you can get it from. It's not just in the Bible. Hallelujah. Some of us are just stubborn because we don't want to listen to no one. Let's say, let's tell the truth, that you feel I have more sense than you. But the wise person, that if they found someone that they thought uh, had more sense than them, they would follow that person so they could add on to themselves. You ought to look at somebody and say, you ought to have enough of wisdom to want to add to what you have. Hallelujah. Oh, boy, I love God. The word just get all in your business. The word gets under the cover with you. Hallelujah. He says, search and then seek for it. Listen, being passive about it ain't enough. You can't just be passive. You got to be passionate. You, you, you got to caress this thing. It oh. says, seek for it, crowd for it. Go try to find it. Ooh. Listen with an intent and a purpose that you may receive what God has said. We got church folk that come to church. You don't come to church with the intent or the purpose to receive from God. It's like a theater to you. Our churches have become theater to a lot of the members that come to church because they don't understand that we're coming to receive something from God. I did not come to entertain you this morning. Preach. Hallelujah. Our churches is not a theater. Well, not a soundtrack to make you feel good. I don't care if you feel good or not. If you listen to wisdom, wisdom will make you feel good. Wow. You don't have to go to a doctor to feel good. You get some wisdom. You can feel good on your own. But doctor, doctor. Amen. Right. <sighs> Let me go with doctor feel good. He's giving you something. <laughs> yes, Lord. I, I know this. What a preacher of rough on us this morning. I'm not rough. The word of God is right. And he said, wisdom said, if you receive it, take it into your heart, God can help you and God can bless you if you receive what he said. Let's get on up in here. Now, it, it says, wait, listen, we must be willing to be taught first. That's what wisdom say. Why do we send our children to school? Well, there's a whole lot of reasons why we send our children to school. A lot of parents send their children to school because they're tired of them. They don't want to train them or know nothing about them. They send them to school and let somebody else bother with them for eight hours. When they get home, they only have two or three hours and you send them to bed. So you really have no time. You're not trained. But the Bible says, train up a child in the way that he should go. And when they're old, they won't depart from it. Meaning that as they get older, they understand the wisdom and the instruction that they receive. Then they say, oh, that's why mom and dad told me to do that. It begins to make sense right now as we teach our children. The instruction does not make sense. And many times they don't understand. But it's okay to worry about it. Train up a child in the way that he should go. Oh, thank you, God. And when they're old, they won't depart. So when they grow up and think they got some sense <laughs> and hang around those children that haven't been to church, God will set up the word that we train our children in them and make them remember. So listen, that's why you went to Sunday school. That's why you went to Bible study. That's why when you went to vacation Bible school, so that you could learn about God. Well, here he is. Wisdom says, don't worry about what our children are doing right now. Don't even worry about whether or not they even act like they're getting what we're training them about God. When the time comes, God will activate 
the word. Thank you. I like that God will activate the word that we have instilled in their hearts. They don't realize it is in their heart. They think when they're going about their ways, they're doing what they want to do, and I think forgotten. But somewhere or another, God will activate the word that we've given them in their heart. They'll wake up one morning or one day, one noon, one night, whatever it was, and they'll say, listen, I got to change my ways. <sighs> Why? Because the word that we train them begins to activate. They'll find themselves running back to the house of God and don't know why. I don't know why, but I just woke up this morning. I had to go to church. Woo! Thank you, God, for the word. That's what the word does. The word is not dormant. It's just when it's time to work, it knows when to activate. That's what the word of God is. In the book of Matthew, then it said wisdom over here in the Fourth verse, it said, if thou seekest her as, as silver and searchest for her as for hidden treasures. Ah, thank you, God. Thank you, God. Ah, wisdom is a treasure. Mm. You want a treasure, huh? Yeah. What you looking for? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you want a treasure, huh? But you're not looking for no wisdom. You're not searching for wisdom. Let's go one more time in our Bibles. To the book of St. Matthew's, the um, second, uh, St. Matthew, I'm sorry, 621. You're already right there, you at 7. St. Matthew 621. Hallelujah. Why y'all get it? I'll find it. I'll read it. It said, For where your treasure is, <sighs> for where your treasure is, there will your heart be. Also, where your treasure is. So the real question on this morning is, where is your treasure? Where is your heart at? What are you really seeking for? What are you really seeking after? Because whatever your treasure is, you will find whatever your treasure is. <sighs> Have you made wisdom your treasure? Have you placed a value on wisdom for you that you will begin, as the Bible said, search for? It says, seek after it as silver. Mm. Wow. Ah, uh, you go hunt for gold and everything else. Seek after wisdom. But you got to seek after it through God. Oh, I love it this morning. This thing is getting good. It's getting better and better. Listen. Then we, as we read our verses 7 and 8, it says, 6, 7, and 8, brother, it says, For the Lord giveth wisdom. <laughs> out of his mouth come knowledge and understanding. Out of his mouth. I don't know who you're going to for wisdom. And if they're not a godly person, if God didn't say, you may be getting the wrong uh, information. You get the information, and it's not revelation. You need some revelation today. For the Lord gave it wisdom out of his mouth come in knowledge and understanding. It said he laid up sound wisdom for the righteous. He is a buckler to them that walk. Oh my. He'll keep you straight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He'll walk you in the right path. He'll help you make the right decisions. That's why Proverbs 3, 3, 5, and 6 said trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lead not to your